Sir Darren Porcher, who received his doctorate in educational leadership and policy from Fordham University in 2012. <coughs> his dissertation is titled Reducing School Misdemeanor Assaults in Urban Settings Through School Collaboration Between School Leaders and Police. Dr. Porcher retired from the New York City Police Department as a lieutenant after having served 20 years. He is also a retired officer with the United States Army Reserve. And today, uh, Dr. Porcher is going to be talking about to serve and protect privilege from within. All right, good afternoon. good afternoon. I'm in a tough spot here, first of all. Affirmative action, we had three women and I'm the only guy here. <laughs> you see how this played out, right? Um, I want to say, um, first off, I'm glad to be here, um, and the sole purpose of my session here is to just inform you of different instances of white privilege, so when you become a professional, after you graduate from college, you can understand and you can make the necessary adjustments as you progress. Uh, Dr. Santiago mentioned time limit. The reason why she gave everyone a time limit is because I had two hours and 400 slides. You guys ready for that? <laughs> Put up the 400 slides. <laughs> no, uh, we all, I have my 12 minutes like everyone else. All right, this is what um, I'm here to speak to you guys about how white privilege impacts in the police departments and the criminal justice system. The first thing, when we think of the, uh, the inception of the NYPD, we go back to 1845. 1845, this was prior to the Emancipation Proclamation. We think about, so slavery was still in effect when the NYPD was established. Slavery, the Emancipation Proclamation came into play, 1863. As time progressed, we had a lot of customs and at the helm. Once again, we have an all-white department. So, when we look at a lot of the, uh, the practices that were followed within these, uh, these divisions of law enforcement, they impacted on minority communities in negative ways. So, case in point, we look to stop and frisk. Right now, um, here in New York City, we have a lawsuit, Floyd versus the City of New York. And in that lawsuit, Floyd versus the City of New York, it, it focuses on an, in, uh, an inappropriately high number of African Americans and Latinos that were stopped and frisked in the City of New York. One quick question. Anybody here ever been stopped and frisked before? Okay, I have one, two, three. Four. Okay, it's interesting. Five. I don't have a male white in here by any chance, correct? Have you ever been stopped and frisked before, sir? Okay. Do I have a female white that's been stopped and frisked before? Okay. Now, as you see, just based on our student population, this is something that primarily impacts on minority communities. So, the Floyd case focuses, it, it's something that started in 2010 in the Bloomberg Ray Kelly uh, administration. And when we look back at, just case in point, 2012, we had 700,000 people that were stopped and frisked in the city of New York. Out of that 700,000 individuals, only 3% of those individuals were found guilty of a crime. An overwhelming majority of those individuals that were stopped and frisked were African American and Latino. This reverts back to Having an administration that's made up primarily of male whites, and based on that, the ideology of stop and frisk focused on communities of individuals that were of color. As we progress, now we have uh, Man de Blasio. Man de Blasio's, one of his first uh, policies was to come in and end the stop and frisk era. We had uh, the Bloomberg era, excuse me, the Bloomberg administration had an appeal against stop and frisk. As soon as um, de Blasio's come into um, power as the mayor, he since dropped that appeal. Therefore, a uh, cash award settlement will be paid out to the number of participants that were um, petitioners in Floyd versus uh, the city of New York. Now, what is the stop and frisk? First thing is, it basically, there are four standards of proof in when an individual can be stopped when an individual can be frisked. The first thing is a common law right of inquiry. That's when an officer, just based on a hunch, can ask you a question such as your name, address, explanation of conduct. In no way, shape, or form is skin color connected with that. A person is free to leave at any point. Then we have the um, mere suspicion. Now, mere suspicion, we have somewhat of a founded suspicion 
that an individual may possibly be um, partake in a crime. Once again, an individual cannot be stopped, cannot be forcibly stopped, nor frisked. Now, when we think about a stop and frisk, now we're at reasonable suspicion. At reasonable suspicion, that's when an individual, a police officer believes that an individual has committed, is committed, or is about to commit a penal law misdemeanor or a felony. Now, at mere suspicion, an officer can forcefully stop. When I say forcefully stop, meaning the individual is not free to go until the officer can conduct an investigation that should go no longer than 15 <coughs> minutes. If the, or within that 15 minute time frame, that's when an officer can conduct a frisk. A frisk is not for weapons. The frisk is for weapons. It's not to find drugs. It's not to find drugs. And that frisk consists of a pat down of the outermost garments just to determine if the individual is in possession of a weapon, strictly for the officer's safety. And this reverts back to um, a federal, uh, excuse me, a landmark case which is referred to as Terry versus Ohio. And, but at this, at, once again, Color is not, and it, you, you, will, you will not see color listed when we look to reasonable suspicion. If the officer finds an individual is in possession of a weapon, then of course, by all means, the officer can confiscate that weapon, arrest the individual. The next standard of proof is probable cause, and that's when, of course, when an individual can be arrested. Now, when you look at minority communities throughout the city of New York, it's, you have a disproportionately higher number of minorities that are stopped and frisked. The reason why you have a disproportionately high number of minorities that are stopped and frisked because the police department is disproportionately has a disproportionately higher number of male whites that are members of the department. So in, in many instances, they will bring the ideologies that they have from the background, such as either Long Island, upstate, etc. They'll bring that same ideology into policing. Now what happens is this indirectly impacts on all of us in society because in the city of New York, this, in this, the city of New York is an amalgamation of different ethnicities and nationalities. So many people here know individuals that have been stopped and frisked. And so when we look back to why this is happening, a lot of it is we need game changers in the criminal justice systems. The game changers start with you as uh, college students. You're going to progress, you become, you're going to become professionals, and you need to focus on these issues because indirectly it impacts on us as a society as a whole. Now, I'm not here to tell you that all white people are bad, etc. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to tell you that you as students here are game changers for the future. You can assist us all by doing the right thing. A lot of it revolves around not, in, not instituting nepotism, as you progress in whatever your field may be, let's say it's not criminal justice, let's say it's psych let's say it's sociology, etc. As you sit down with individuals, you don't want to judge an individual based on race. However, what is their ability? Ability is what the driving force should be in society. If a person has the ability by all means, you will work with that person accordingly, but in no way, shape, or form are you to strike someone down based on race. Uh, I have a lot of students, in, I have a lot, there's quite a few students that are here, past and present. And I just genuinely hope that you can take from the other three panelists all of these wonderful ideas that they bring to the table, and you can use that in your life as you progress. Um, in closing, like I, I just want to say, I'm really happy to hear, be here. I'm tremendously proud of all of you guys that are students, and just keep up the good work, and hopefully we can make this world a better place. Thank you.